Hey, in this bonus tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use Loop Cloud to make awesome lead patterns, as it's such a great resource for both finding sounds and also turning them into patterns, that it would be frankly rude of me to not mention it to anyone wanting to get into lead design, particularly if you're a beginner, but also if you've got some experience already, because it's absolutely an amazing platform for producers of any level. So here's a fat brakes groove that I've made earlier today with drums and bass which I've exported into a couple of loops just to save CPU. Now, the great thing about Loop Cloud is it actually comes with a whole suite of plugins. As of the end of this month, August 23, there'll be four plugins in the suite with Loop Cloud Sounds coming out as well. It's currently on beta but I'll feature that later on the channel in its own video. Uh, for now, we're gonna look at the Loop Cloud main app, but I actually also did include drum and play in the tracks that I used to create these parts earlier on with um, play uh, being one of the bass layers with this sub bass preset here and Loop Cloud drum creating the main drums in my drums bus group here. So these are, both really awesome free instruments that come with Loop Cloud. So just two more excellent reasons for signing up. But we're gonna jump over to the Loop Cloud main app to create our lead patterns. Uh, when using the standalone app, you want to load the last plugin, the fourth plugin in the suite, just called Loop Cloud currently onto a MIDI track. And this is just a link basically from your door to the main app. And once you've opened that up, uh, it will automatically sense that in Loop Cloud saying connected to Ableton Live. And that means two things. Firstly, the app synchronizes to your door. So whatever tempo you have set in your project will be matched within Loop Cloud. So you can preview things in time with your beats. And secondly, all of the audio from the app now routes onto this MIDI channel here in Ableton. So let's start making some lead patterns in Loop Cloud then. So to get going with a new search, you can click on any one of the main categories here using the buttons, or you can just start typing something into the search box. So we're gonna start typing in lead and you can see any related tags come up below. So we're gonna click on lead as the instrument type. And that then starts a new search for all lead samples in the library. And you can then narrow down the search using the tags that come up automatically below, or you can click on any of the attributes on the side here. And let's, for instance, just to start off with, let's, let's look at loops. But instead of clicking on loops here, I'm just gonna click match tempo because that will then pretty much just search for entirely loops that are in the tempo or at least within a certain range that's close to the tempo of our project. And maybe I'll just search for breaks loops as well. And as well as being in time, I want these to be in tune with my project. So I've got two options. I can either just search for samples that are in the key of my, of my track. So I do that by clicking on the G here. And uh, that will obviously come up with a, a slightly shorter list, but still tons to choose from. Or I can lock the player down the bottom to my key. So clicking there, we can lock it to G then selects lock automatically, and then it will re-pitch all of the samples in this list to G for me. Um, and you can then export them in that, you know, transpose to that key. So it's a really useful feature. So jumping back over to Ableton, then I'll start that playing and, and then I'll go back over to Loop Cloud, start that playing, and you'll hear how the loops synchronize with my beats. So some interesting stuff coming up there already, and breaks is actually one of the um, more minority genres on Loop Cloud. So I would almost certainly expand this out to something like house, uh, which will then give you tons more lead options in the thousands, if not tens of thousands, as opposed to in the hundreds. Jumping over though now to a new search, we're gonna start looking at lead one shots. 
And I'm going to narrow this down to bass music, because I think that's going to be more suitable for the type of thing that we're trying to create. And now it comes up with a list of all sorts of different pretty raucous one shots. Let's check them out. And all of these are being repitched to G, don't forget, as we've still kept the player in pitch lock mode. Now what we're going to do, though, is open up the extended player by clicking on the edit switch, which then gives you access to all of the different features in here for editing patterns. And you can do this with loops, by the way. So if you want to kind of customize loops to make them your own, then you can chop them up in here, add effects and all sorts. Um, what we're going to do, though, is go straight into the pattern section here and load up one of the factory presets. So these are the ones you get with Loop Cloud. These are the ones that I've created. <laughs> I've created hundreds of patterns for myself and also for uh, Produce Tech members uh, in various courses and so on and bonus material. We're going to go straight into leads, though, and choose one of these either genre specific or general ones here. You can see when I select them, what happens then is that one shot gets sequenced, if you like, with a particular pattern here where it's placing that sample in various positions along the pattern, which could be anything from, you know, one bar to up to four bars or beyond. Um, it's also re-pitching things, sometimes changing the level um, and also adding various effects in many of the patterns as well, which are automated. So it comes up with some pretty awesome stuff. So let's just check out what this one shot's turned into and then I'll click through some of the different samples here. And we can try maybe one of the, I like the techno ones. If we want the samples in the list here to be all short, you can see some of them are fully sustained and quite long samples. Other ones are kind of pluckier. Uh, what we can do is come over to the attributes here and we can bring the length down to make it much shorter. And that will come up with a lot of mostly, probably quite plucky ones. It's also useful actually for doing all sorts of other things. You can select the tone, so you can you know, only choose higher frequency or lower frequency ones, for instance, or you can even get in and start to choose different envelope properties like the attack and decay. These are the amplitude envelopes. So in other words, you can choose one that has a, a very short attack. So it's very plucky like these ones with a burst of sound that fades away quite rapidly, or you could increase the attack there to have sounds that fade in, for instance. Let's try that. Always sounds quite cool, a bit more unusual. Let's go back to pluckier sounds now, though. In fact, I'll get rid of the ones with uh, a fade in at the start to make sure they're all pretty, pretty plucky there. And yeah, let's just play our groove and then check out these different patterns with it to hear how they sound. By the way, when you find samples you like, you can uh, organize them into collections here, which you do either by clicking on the favorite switch there or clicking on the three dots or right clicking and choosing add to collection and then either creating a new one or adding it to an existing one, perhaps for leads. Uh, it then appears over here on the collections tab. I've actually got a fave plux collection here. Um, and this just saves time when you're creating patterns. You know, you can just come in, load up the pattern, choose all these different plucks, and you know they're going to sound great. So 
so as a beginner, that might be where you want to kind of end the creative process in Loop Cloud, at least, where you've chosen a one shot sample that you like, and you've used the player here to sequence it into an interesting pattern for you. And you can now export that out as a loop that is synchronized with your project and ready to go. So you can start chopping it up or just arranging it from there. Um, but if you want to create something that's even more unique, then it's actually quite easy to do that in the player section here. Now, I've obviously got many tutorials showing tons of different techniques going right up to very advanced with the player. But even with fairly basic editing skills, for instance, you know, clicking on these slices here for a minute, an existing pattern, moving them around, um, trimming them using the edges, bringing the level up and down by clicking on the top, adding a, a fade in or out by, you know, dragging the, the edges there. And that's before we even start to get into more advanced stuff like, you know, clicking on the tools here and doing things like slipping, shuffling through the sample, uh, reversing the sample, or going to pitch mode where you can see how things are transposed and then shifting the pitches up or down from there. But before we get into that, let's just have a little jam around with this. So I'm actually going to bring the pattern length down to just one bar, zoom into that by clicking on the ruler here, and I'll just delete all these. You don't have to delete them. You could also double click to mute them. And I'm going to delete them though, and bring this one down so it's a bit kind of snappier. And yeah, and then I'm just going to duplicate this out and adjust the level and maybe add a fade here and there, possibly reverse it if the sample is going to work reversed uh, and that kind of thing. Yeah, to duplicate this slice, by the way, you right click and choose duplicate there. Or if you can remember the keyboard shortcut, command D with it selected. Uh, you can also hold down the command key on a Mac or probably control on a PC and then get a slice that way as well. So let's have a jam with this. So you get the idea, and that was all just, you know, very basic kind of duplicating and playing around with the levels, like I said, by dragging the top, adding fades. I did go into the tool menu, choose reverse, and then click on one of the slices to reverse it. Um, but other than that, yeah, it was all just moving things around, adding fades, and generally kind of experimenting. Obviously, I've got some experience of this, so things might come together a bit quicker for me, but it's certainly a great thing to kind of just practice having a go with and you know once you've organized your samples like this to get some some rude sounds together it's really quick to create patterns like this so if i'm liking that i can just if it's a sample i don't own because of course you can do this with all of the sounds in your library as well but if i don't own it i can click buy there and then i either choose um, export process current track, which will be this, or you can also have it set to current mix, which is the default. Either of those two modes uh, will work. And then when you click it and drag that out, it's now going to have a loop 
which I can just drag straight into Ableton here and get rid of the, the warp, turn down the level a bit, duplicate that out, and that should work now straight away with our groove. So that was just a, a quick example there of making a pattern on the fly without using any complicated techniques or really thinking too much about what I was doing. And it still managed to come up with a pretty cool and interesting loop that I could then use straight away in my project without having to do very much. But obviously, it's brilliant if you can take a little bit more time to create these patterns and basically have a bit more fun in Loop Cloud. Um, because you'll then build up quite an extensive library of patterns that you can then call on when you want to do a bit of sound design to save yourself a ton of time. You know, for instance, if I had this lead sample and I'm thinking I want to create a pattern with it, then, well, for a start, I can, I can now drag it out if, well, this is actually already in G, but if it wasn't in G, I could transpose it to G and just drag it out so it's ready to go as a one shot in my project. Um, but then on top of that, I could load a few different patterns, like for example, the ones that come with my complete guide to Loop Cloud course, which are, well, were originally designed for bass, but actually work really well on leads as well. So it's got a ton of different kind of filter presets initially, and then some of the later ones have different delay effects, which actually work really well as well. So if you export out a few of these patterns as loops into your project, as well as the original transposed one shot, then it just gives you a whole palette of sounds, much of which will contain cool and interesting little effects progressions that you can then fairly easily, just with a bit of basic audio editing, chop up and turn into interesting and unique patterns of your own. So that's been my quick guide to using Loop Cloud to create lead patterns. And for more information, go to loopcloud.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.